Hi there, I'm Brother Merrill, and this is Sunshine for the Soul Inspirational Stories. I really appreciate everyone that watches, and today I plan to share several stories from listeners that have shared their temple experiences. I love working at the temple. It has changed my life. It's made me a better man. Like the dews from heaven, guidance and inspiration has distilled in my heart and on my mind and helped me learn to hear the word of the Lord. All the people that we do temple work for are allowed to come witness their work being done for them in the temple. Like saviors on Mount Zion, we're performing ordinances that they cannot do for themselves. And when you do this, you are linked to those individuals in eternity and in time, and they will help you as you have helped them. I'm so thankful for everyone that has shared some of their temple experiences with me in the comments sections, and I would encourage anyone that has an inspirational story to please share it. We need more inspiration in today's world. My first story is from John Lang. He was a temple worker in the St. George Temple in 1928. He says one day, while he was serving in the baptistry of the St. George Temple, he distinctly heard a voice up near the ceiling at the side of the baptistry area. It was calling the names of the individuals who were having their baptisms performed by proxy. After hearing several names, he noticed that some of them were pronounced differently or were different than the names that the recorder at the font was calling, and it seemed they were working with two different lists. Brother Lang heard it very distinctly, and he pondered it for several months, and in October of that year, he had gone up into one of the upper rooms of the temple, as was his practice, to pray secretly. And he thanked the Lord because he had come to realize that there was a recording angel recording all the work that was done in the temple each day. He said as he finished his prayers, a question came through his mind. He thought, where and how does this heavenly record come from? And immediately the Lord knew his thoughts and answered his query with the following words. He said, every spirit that comes to earth has a guardian angel whose duty it is to keep a record of the individual's parentage, the conditions under which they were born, their inheritance, environment, thoughts, and desires. And when the individual's life is completed, the guardian angel's work ends. The angel then returns, makes a report, and hands in the record they have kept. This record is placed upon the book of life. He said all this gave him to understand that in this book is preserved the names, perfect dates of every spirit that has ever come to the earth. God will bring into the temples a perfect record of every individual that has lived on the earth, whether they lived in an area or a time where records were kept or not. Every soul that has come to this earth will have the opportunity to have their temple work done in the Lord's holy house. Thanks to Kathy McAllister, she shared the following experience. She said one night she went to the temple and she was really very tired. She had a warm feeling with her. She said that each time she made another covenant, an oath in the endowment, she felt a stronger and stronger spirit with her. She began to be enthused and excited. By the time she got to the veil, she was crying so hard that she could barely speak the words of the veil ceremony. And as she passed through the veil, the receiver on the other side looked at her and she said, she's here. And he had tears streaming down his cheeks and he said, I know. They had both been blessed to have a wonderful spiritual manifestation witnessing that the sister who was receiving her work that day was indeed there with them. 
This happens so frequently in the temple, it's amazing. I know that the individuals that we are doing work for are there. I have pondered why do we feel some of them so strongly, and then others we don't feel at all. And I've decided that just as it is on earth, some people are very quiet and reserved. Some people are very outgoing and boisterous. And some may have more freedom to participate and interact with us as physical beings. But I know that all those who we do temple work for are allowed to come and witness those ordinances as they are done. Another listener shared, Several times I've felt family members and even people that are not related to me as I've done work. I consider those very sacred times. I would add my testimony of the divine power we get when we do temple work. I was just finishing a service mission in the temple office when I decided that I wanted to become an ordinance worker as well. For six months, I acted in both capacities. I had some serious health issues, and during that time, While I was serving in both duties, the power I felt and the prayers that were answered as I went through the temple helped me understand these health issues. I can't explain it. It was such a blessing to be in the temple, even in the midst of my struggles. I have found that as well. No matter what I'm going through in my life, when I take time to go to the temple and serve, The Lord more than makes up for me the investment of my time with productivity and blessings that I could not accomplish without his help. Another listener writes, Thank you, Brother Merrill, for your YouTube sunshine. As I listened to you talking about the angels who visit temples tonight, I was reminded of a story that my mother-in-law told me. She and my father-in-law were serving in the extraction program before family search. There was one sister in the group who became very frustrated one day, and in her anger she exclaimed, Why do they even bother to write when their writing is so terrible that no one could read it? She was just frustrated trying to, if anybody's done extraction, you know sometimes you just can't make it out. And that's how this sister was. A few moments later, the other workers noticed that she was crying, and they went over and asked if she was okay, and she said, I saw him. I saw him, a little old man in a monk's habit. He held up his crippled, gnarled, arthritic hand and said, I did the best I could. After this experience, this sister was able to read the records and never complained again. There are angels among us as we work in the temple and on temple work. Chris Jones shared a comment. He said when he was serving in Ecuador several years ago, his bishop told him of the experience he had as he did his own father's temple work. He said as he came up out of the water of the font, he audibly heard a voice say, Thank you, son. Thank you. Those people are there. Some people are blessed to see them. And many, many of us are allowed to feel their presence. The service we perform as ordinance workers is wonderful. Sometimes experiences take place where you have a spiritual experience because of a patron that has come. One day as I was serving as the baptistry coordinator in the Provo Temple, a mother and a daughter came in. The daughter was in a wheelchair, and they had a large group of people with them that had made a reservation, and the mother asked if her daughter would possibly be able to go up into the font area and watch the company as they were baptized. I had an impression, and I turned to this young sister, and I said, would you like to participate in the baptisms today? And she'd never considered that she would be able to do that. And on further inquiry, I determined that her condition was such that she could stand for a short time with assistance. 
And her mother felt like she could probably stand for a, a time in the water. And so we arranged for two strong young men that were in the company with them to assist this little sister out of her wheelchair down the stairs into the font. And then one of them stood behind her and held her shoulders. The other stood off to the side opposite of the person performing the baptism. And then as each prayer was offered, they carefully lowered this young sister down into the water. And she was able to hold her own nose and hold her breath. And everyone that was in the baptistry that day, in the chapel and in the font area, felt the power of the spirit and gratitude, not only of the people who had received that ordinance, but for this family and for this young sister as she participated in the baptisms herself. Ron Hamblin shared this experience as a lead worker in the baptistry in Seattle, we had a youth group who was accompanied by a young man who was blind and unable to walk. I was impressed to allow another young man that was with them. He was very muscular and a wrestler at their school, and he carried this blind young man down the stairs at the base of the font where he was able to feel the oxen to run his hands across their horns and to feel their faces. And everyone watching through the glass, separating the chapel and the font, were brought to tears. Many spiritual experiences occur in the baptistry. Ron says, thank you for allowing us to reminisce. Barbara Ashley shared, thank you so much for this program and service. I live in Rexburg, Idaho. I am five minutes from the temple. Even at 83 years young, I do three endowment sessions three days a week. And two days a week, I serve and do ceilings. While I have never seen any of those I do the work for, as I sit in the endowment, I ask the individual I'm working for if they are accepting the work. And through the power of the Spirit, it has been witnessed to me each time I inquire that, yes, they are there with me, and they are receiving the work that I am doing for them. There is nothing like doing temple work. We have several patrons at the Orem Temple like that, that come multiple days every week and spend most of the day there. A shout out to Brother Deering. He, in his declining health, sometimes does four or five endowments a day. And he takes a little time off in between sessions to wolf down a protein bar, and then he limps off to the next session. He's a great guy. He's a big man, and he he struggles to move around. We, we help him as we can, but he's a dear soul. And he also shares the spirit and knows of the power of the temple. Ralph Freimeyer said uh, one day he was working in initiatory. All of a sudden, he began to think about a nephew of his that had passed away years earlier from lupus. He mentioned it to the ordinance worker that was in initiatory with him, and the man said, well, maybe he wants you to do his temple work. And so he prepared the proper documentation, submitted it to the temple. He came and did the baptism and confirmation and the initiatory, and his, he was finishing his endowment. In his mind, he heard very clearly, thank you, Uncle David, thank you, Uncle David, thank you, Uncle David. And he said, I know that the people that we do temple work for accept this work and are there witnessing it with us. Hick Squatch, he said, I was privileged to have a heavenly escort with me in an endowment session. The man I was going through for was by my side the entire time. I could see him clearly in my mind's eye. He was a Spaniard with a long mustache and dark eyes. And I quietly spoke with him as we moved through the rooms for the endowment. That was quite an experience, and it's the only time that I've had it. Another listener, Southern Angel, shares this experience. She says, 
Thank you for the beautiful video on the blessings from the house of the Lord. I have so many beautiful experiences in the temple that I want to share. My mother-in-law came to me in a dream when I was inactive. I sensed by the dream that she wanted her temple work done. I returned to activity in the church in 2020. I worked through my repentance with my bishop, returning to the covenant path. It has been a beautiful and tender mercy in my life. I submitted my mother-in-law's names to the temple at the end of 2022. She was baptized on her son's birthday the following January. The following day, I went to the Atlanta temple to do her initiatory and endowment ordinances. I felt close to her as I performed each of those ordinances. I knew she had accepted the work. It was a beautiful experience being in the house of the Lord and feeling the joy of this good sister at the accomplishment of this ordinance in her behalf. She said, another time, I was in the chapel in the temple. I was very troubled and was not feeling peace in a very peaceful place. I had brought worries concerning my family with me into the temple. As I sat there pondering and feeling heavy, a sweet voice came into my mind saying, Remember to rest in the Lord and bask in His love. That beautiful sentence has brought me comfort in so many situations in life. It has become a scripture to me. Now when I enter the house of the Lord, I consider that I am a guest there, so I listen to what the Lord might teach me. I come away with wisdom and comfort each time I attend the temple. Thank you, Brother Merrill, for your channel and dedication to help gather Israel. I feel is a beautiful thing that brings joy to many. I've had a lot of people thank me for the efforts that I'm putting into this channel. I feel we all need more inspiration. Nicole Reinders said, This year, my dad died. And exactly one month later, my husband, as proxy, was able to start doing his temple work. We were allowed to start this work a month after he passed, on the weekend of Father's Day. It was very special for me to do this for him, especially since he had tragically died without feeling hope. I was now bringing him hope. Twenty-two years ago, I had become a member as a teenager, and now was honored to do this for him. He had a tricky family situation. I was confused which parent I should seal him to. He had been raised by his grandparents and had called his grandfather dad. They were very close. My dad had told me that when his biological father had died, he'd not even gone to the funeral because he had never felt that he acknowledged him as his son. He was raised in a small town and he had many cousins in the town, but did not closely associate with them because they didn't even know he was their cousin. Her father wasn't close to either of his biological parents. When she got ready to do the sealing, she struggled to know who to seal him to. And she was speaking with the worker, and he suggested that she seal him to his grandparents as adoptive parents. That way, her father could make a choice on the other side, according to what his preference was. She said on the day of the sealing, she was focused on the joy her father felt as he was being sealed to his grandparents. And then, as the sealer spoke the name of his biological father, she had an unexpected experience. Suddenly, Something that interrupted my thoughts and feelings, I felt my dad's joy at finally being acknowledged by his biological father. But I also felt someone else was there with us. I knew my dad's biological father was also present, and that he had finally acknowledged his son. This brought joy to both of them. This impression had come to me suddenly and was not something I was expecting to happen. I know my father and his biological father and his grandparents were there with us that day in the sealing room. She said, I'm grateful for such a sweet experience. Stacy Ferguson shared, When I did my husband's temple work, I saw his face on the proxy that knelt across 
the altar as he was sealed to me. He was smiling. I miss him. But I know he wanted his work done, even though on earth he was not baptized. We had to wait a year before we could do his temple work, and he pestered me most of the year. That year also gave me the time I needed to prepare to enter the house of the Lord. As soon as the work was done, I felt true peace of mind. I am so glad that we can do this work for our loved ones and others. Another experience that's wonderful. As I began an endowment session, I became aware of a large group of spirits in the room, gathered so tightly they had to stand in tiers as though there were balconies around the sides and back of the room. This was in one of the largest instruction rooms in any of the temples. The spirits far outnumbered the people in the room. I had a strong impression that they were there to celebrate and witness the work of one specific person. It turned out that in our session there was a young man there to receive his own endowments. He had recently been converted to the church and was the only member of his family to have ever joined the church. I was blessed to be given this sacred privilege to see these individuals from the other side. And he witnesses that I know the spirits of the deceased are present as we perform their ordinances. Another very interesting story from a book. A brother Carpenter, a former recorder in Manti, recorded, A local patriarch came to the Manti temple on Tuesday when baptisms were being performed. Having none of his own to officiate for, he was invited into the baptistry to observe and witness, as he sat, to his view, appeared the spirits of those they were officiating for. This congregation of spirits stood awaiting their turn. As the recorder called out the name of the person to be baptized next, the patriarch noticed a pleasant smile on the face of the spirits whose name has been called. They would leave the group of fellow spirits and come to the side of the recorder, there they would watch as their baptism was performed by proxy. And then with a joyful countenance, they would move away, making room for the next personage to enjoy the same experience. As the patriarch was watching the group, he noticed that all of a sudden the group began to look discouraged and sad, and they were beginning to turn and move away. And as he looked back around the font, he realized there were no more patrons there to act as proxy, and he saw the recorder at the font gathering his records to conclude the work for the day. I have often felt the urgency of people as I've worked at the temple, because those people are there, and they're anxiously awaiting for us to do this work. There are billions of our brothers and sisters waiting for this work to be done. Just a few other comments that have been left that I've enjoyed. Moria Astinson says, Thank you, Brother Merrill. I felt the Spirit touch my heart when you relayed these wonderful stories about the temple. May the Lord bless you in all you do. I'll be happy to meet you in the eternities. It's a bit far for me to come now, as I'm nearly 80 years old and I live in New Zealand. Kia ora. Thank you. And Meg Callis said, Good evening from Ghana, where my husband and I are serving as humanitarian service missionaries. Before we left, we also served in the Ogden, Utah Temple. Thank you for this channel and for sharing your wonderful stories. I'm grateful I found this channel. I have had many wonderful experiences in the house of the Lord and hope to share them sometime again. Thank you. Another comment that I liked from Steve Baker. I work in the Tucson Temple. You are right in all you have said. It has changed me also. So much for the better. It is a great place to begin in transitioning that mighty change of heart. For me and my wife, it was about six months into our service when we were driving home late at night after our shift, a hundred miles each way, when we had the same thought regarding the change of heart as described in the Book of Mormon. That was seven years ago. We still work at the temple, 
It keeps getting more awesome. Thank you for your thoughts and experiences as you are sharing them. Perfect name for your channel, your brother in the gospel, Brother Baker. And one more comment. The promises that Brother Merrill just shared about working in the temple are true. I am a temple worker in the Orem Temple. Every time I leave the temple after my shift, I feel a deep connection with our Heavenly Father and Savior, Jesus Christ. They love us. Working in the temple will change your life. That's from my blue-collar trade brother. I do know that the work we perform in the temple is the work of the Lord. Jesus Christ is in the temples. The spirits that we do work for are in the temples. And as we come, we will feel instructed. We will be given personal information to help us in our lives. Our lives and our families will be blessed. I know that to be true. If you don't have a temple recommend, you can sit on the temple grounds. They're dedicated. And you can there feel the presence and instruction of the Lord. And this will help you as you prepare to get your own temple recommend so that you can participate in the ordinances in the house of the Lord. I'd like to thank Jake from Family History Storybooks. He's just finishing up a book about my great-great-grandfather. It's a beautiful book. I'll have a link in the comments section for a $100 off coupon for my listeners. These are beautiful books. I'd encourage you to check them out at FamilyHistoryStoryBooks.com. I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast today. I love the temple. You can subscribe to my channel right here. And if you enjoyed this story, you'll probably enjoy this one. And all of Sunshine for the Soul inspirational stories are right here. Thank you.